live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. The Westpac rescue helicopter has again scarred river systems around Launceston in the search for missing teenager Cheyenne Lee Tatnell. The 14-year-old vanished more than two months ago. She was last seen walking along Henry Street towards Ravenswood on April 30. Meanwhile, a swift water search will take place tomorrow as efforts to find a missing Belgian tourist continue. More resources will be deployed to the Philosopher Falls area where Celine Cremere's car was located late last month. Search personnel have spent the past week scouring dense bushland, facing challenging weather conditions. And despite the efforts, there has been no further signs of the 31-year-old. Police say tomorrow is part of a bid to find answers for Celine's family before they begin to scale back the search. The Aboriginal flag is flying high across Hobart, marking the beginning of NAIDOC week. The community here ready to celebrate and fight for further equality. Once a place of horrors, Luchawitta's Aboriginal community now stands tall at Piura Katina. It's the place of the first massacre of Aboriginal people in this state. But we also celebrate as we acknowledge so many of our elders who proudly stood here in 1995, accepting the return of this land. Gathering there today to raise the Aboriginal flag and open NAIDOC week for 2023. There's a sign of resilience in our strength. We're still here. You know, we haven't gone anywhere. Um, we've never left country. And so it's not just a celebration, it's a stance as well. This year's theme is for our elders. As elders we have the responsibility to ensure the continuation of cultural practices, inspire the next generation to continue and pa also pass on the cultural practices entrusted into their care. The Aboriginal community understand that the Aboriginal elders are our backbone. Um, they fought for everything that we have today. Campaigner Rodney Gibbons also named Tasmania Aborigine of the Year. The Tasmanian Aboriginal community has further land handbacks and a treaty in its sights. This week is an opportunity to campaign for both of those, with events around the state to be held, including a march through Launceston CBD. We urge everyone to come along and support the Aboriginal community. It's important to hear what we have to say um, and to be part of our celebrations. 60,000 years of culture and its future worth celebrating. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. The long-running Spirit of Tasmania Polo Ponies case isn't over, with one key animal welfare conviction today quashed. TT Lyon was found guilty of 29 charges last October, all relating to the deaths of 16 horses on board the ship in 2018. But today, the company won an appeal on one count of breaching the Animal Welfare Act, the Supreme Court's full bench ordering a rehearing under a different magistrate. 28 convictions of other animal welfare regulation breaches remain. According to the state opposition, the Premier's failed the public test by hiring a lobbying firm owner to his media team. Font PR partner Daniel McKay has been given a two-month contract to cover a staff vacancy, raising concerns of a conflict of interest. They now have one of its three partners working within the Premier's media office, providing advice to the Premier on what he should and shouldn't say, and also extracting information from the government. I think the best thing as a government that we can do is to be transparent. There are some staff vacancies. We want to go through the process of filling those properly. The Premier says Ms McKay has signed a confidentiality agreement. The Integrity Commission lists Font as the registered lobbyist for Airbnb, the RACT, Tasmanian Small Business Council, Van Derry and 30 other clients. An early morning house fire at Mowbray has been deemed deliberately lit. Crews were called to the Invermay Road blaze around 3am where several fires had been lit and the rear of the property was well alight. No one was around, no witnesses, so yeah, information's a bit sketchy as to what, uh, how it started. The vacant property is slated for demolition in the coming months with the damage bill estimated to be in the tens of thousands. Police are now looking for those responsible.
Hobart is the nation's only capital which saw home values fall last month, according to new data from CoreLogic. Prices fell a third of a percent during June, dropping 13% from last year's peak. Across regional Tasmania, prices have fallen more than 7.5% from the peak. Water safety across Tasmania is set for a major change with new equipment now available for boaties. In an Australian first, specially designed electronic signals are online with experts saying they will give those in trouble a better chance of being rescued. Moving into new light at the flick of a switch, flares no longer the only tool for boaties in trouble on Tasmanian waters. Everyone knows how to turn on a torch. 95% of uh, I would think of people have never let off a flare. I've never let off a flare. In a nation first, Tasmania now offers electronic visual distress signals. Non-toxic and reusable, the handheld device transmits the SOS signal three to five times per minute for up to six hours. Flares only last for three years. These will last a lot longer. Um, we've got to get rid of flares. That costs a lot of money. Vessels can now carry them instead of two red and orange flares. They must also have an EPUB device and VHF radio. Experts believe there'll be a change of tact. As people require new flares, um, that most of them are probably going to switch over. They can actually be tested uh, before you leave the boat ramp. You can't test a flare to see if it's going to work, but you can test an EVDS. Tasmania has more coastline than New South Wales and Victoria combined, with a number of areas notorious. Advocates say being clearly spotted makes a difference. One of these, if it's burning for six hours or lasts for six hours, it's going to give you a far better chance of being rescued than a flare that only lasts a minute. Some requirements for flares remain in place. For more details, visit Mass website. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. More than 150 young dancers are waiting in the wings, ready to take to the Princess Theatre stage. The students putting the final touches on their performance ahead of the first Lonnie Can Dance. Tying on their dancing shoes and testing out their moves. The young dancers, hailing from Launceston's northern suburbs, working alongside Taz Dance to bring the show to life. We really believe that contemporary dance and self-expression is a vital part of the development of young people. So they get to create and they get to be exposed to contemporary dance as a, as a possible career. The stars of tomorrow spending the past six weeks learning the tricks of the trade, ready to step into the spotlight. There's a lot of nervous energy. There's a lot of young people who haven't been on the stage before. When you have the lights in your face and the sound's on and you can't see and it's blackout, and I think that there's a whole lot of just like that kind of feeling. The program making its Tasmanian debut 11 years after establishing in Alice Springs, giving regional performers the chance to tap into the love of dance. Young people should have equal opportunity to engage in things that make them see the world in different ways. Tomorrow night's show promising an hour of fun, joy and hope, deep diving into the future. We all come together to celebrate We'll celebrate, talk about, you know, what, what the future looks like for young people in Launceston. Ready to prove Lonnie can dance. Victoria Easto, 7 Tasmania News. Some of the world's best shellfish will be on offer as the Tassie Scallop Fiesta returns for its sixth year. The winter seafood celebration kicks off later this month, with thousands expected to descend on the northeast. Inviting Tasmanians to come out of their shells. Bridport's famous fiesta is celebrating the town's historic connection to the scallop industry. There was a huge uh, fleet of smaller scallop boats uh, in years gone by were based in Bridport and a, a big uh, scallop splitting factory uh, came about there. The winter fate offering a feast for the senses. A fan favourite, the scallop splitting challenge is set to feature, as well as some new draw cards. We've all heard of the long table lunch, well we're going to have a short round table lunch in of all things an igloo. Local winery Clover Hill is again partnering with the event, offering masterclasses to curious connoisseurs. Sparkling wine and scallops go hand in hand, they were a great marriage from a food and wine matching point of view. But organisers are warning, tickets are expected to sell out quick. This has been uh, on the um, tourism calendar as an absolute highlight um, since it's, it started in 2018. It's nice to have something in the north of the state 
um, in winter to, to get people get people out and promote the area. The fun begins on July 30. Annie Green, 7 Tasmanian News. The hunt is on for one very lucky Tasmanian who scored big in Saturday's Tats Lotto draw. The mystery winner purchased their ticket at the News Express at Shoreline, pocketing a cool $1.25 million. Anyone who shopped there is being urged to check their numbers. They could be the state's newest millionaire. Tasmania's Sam Siggins is hoping interstate competition can become a regular fixture following a thrilling weekend of footy. Both states are exploring a rematch in Queensland next year, but AFL Tasmania's CEO says other leagues are also showing interest. All smiles after a weekend to remember. Most of the boys had a good night and... Um, Yes, yeah, certainly a lot of us got pretty sore heads today still. The Lafroy medal winners two goals from the ruck, one of which sealed the victory, set to go down in local folklore. Sammy Siggins on the left, it's drifting towards the goal! There was heaps of stoppages in that last quarter and um, yeah, I just saw an opportunity to just give him a little nudge under the footy and I um, was yeah, glad I had enough space. I think I carried on like a bit of a pork chop when it happened. The event also a winner. More than 7,000 people flocked to the famous ground, a figure not seen for a long time. The crowd was really vocal and um, it's just so good that people around the state can, can come together. It was like the old devil's days and it, it makes you think, you know, what could be. Both states are likely to meet again in Queensland next year, but the fixture list could also expand, with AFL Tasmania looking at other opportunities. I had some people from AFL New South Wales contact me very jealous. Even looking at, I don't know, the potential of playing a VFL team in a bye. It's not easy to organise, but it would be really cool to have it every year. The only downside was the fixtures clash with local footy leagues. AFL Tasmania believes that won't happen again. Next time around, I'm pretty confident we'll get a clear schedule. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's under-16 side didn't have as good a day at the National Development Championships going down to the Gold Coast Suns this morning. It was tight early on with the boys making a positive start. However, the Suns pulled away after half-time, seven goals to one, helping them record a 61-point victory, 92-31. to 31. Ben McDermott will remain a hurricane until 2026 after signing a two-year extension. It will take him to a decade with the side where he'll reach a big milestone. I'd love to play, get to 100 games at, at the club. I think I'm sitting at about 82. McDermott is currently in the UK playing for Hampshire in the Vitality Blast. The Hawks have just qualified for the finals. And to the NPL and South Hobart has pulled off the upset of the season, rolling Devonport on the strikers' home soil. It comes just weeks after Devonport took down the Southerners in the Lacassoja Cup final. You don't go to Devonport and get an easy game and... So to pick up the points there was absolutely tremendous. It's always a difficult uh, trip, but uh, very happy with the performance from the players. South Hobart women's have continued an unbeaten streak. Skipper Sophie Westwood giving credit to the team's defenders. We are really proud about how we've defended this year. I think it's just as important to acknowledge the goals that haven't been conceded as much as the goals that we've scored. The women's side have conceded just five goals this season, scoring 39. Good evening. Hobart today, 13 degrees. Devonport, Launceston and Burnie, all 12. St Helens was the, was the state's top today with 15. Friendly Beaches and Flinders Island shared a top of 14. King Island, Smithton, Mariah Island and Liwini, all 13. 11 for Lowhead, Grove and Bushy Park. Strawn, 10 degrees and the overnight low recorded at Liwini with minus 7 degrees. An onshore flow is pushing low cloud over northern Tasmania. Thin high cloud can be seen pushing across the remainder of the state. A broad area of cloud covers much of eastern Australia as a high cloud mass crosses the state. A frontal cloud band can be seen moving over the southwest of WA, while an associated low moves to the southwest of Tasmania. Tomorrow, a large high covering most of the Tasman Sea. A trough persists over central Queensland and the front continues crossing southern WA. 
In the west and south, north to northwesterly winds 5 to 15 knots, increasing to 20 knots about the west in the afternoon and evening. The south and west can expect southwesterly swells up to 3 metres. Tomorrow, Hobart and Adventure Bay can expect cloudy conditions. A frost for Taralea tends the top there. Launceston, late showers and 14. Increasing showers in Devonport. Showery condi conditions also and 13 for Bridport. Burnie, 12 degrees with showers, Strawn and Marawar both 13. To the east, St Helens, Swansea and White Mark all cloudy with 14. Now looking to the three day forecast, Wednesday showers about the north with a chance of showers elsewhere. Thursday showers continue in the north with possible showers elsewhere and also a chance of a thunderstorm expected in the far northwest. Friday showers mostly about the north and west with little expected around the lower east coast. And to the mainland tomorrow, Darwin 32, Brisbane can expect rain, Adelaide 15, partly cloudy and 12 is the top for Melbourne. And currently Hobart partly cloudy, 7 degrees, also partly cloudy in Launceston. Devonport cloudy with 10. Now at 9.39 tonight, Australian Eastern Standard Time, we can catch a glimpse of the very first supermoon for 2023. Kim? Okay, one of four for the year. Thank you very much, Kaya. That is all your news for this Monday. I'll be back later with news updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.